Hi all, I'm Age from Liquid Earth, a channel all about video and photography. Today we're looking at slow motion, we're going to look at the moves, the techniques and all of the settings to get some great slow motion to make some really special footage. The first thing we'll do is just go through the settings and show you the settings that I use and that are generally some fairly good settings for slow motion. I'm on an iPhone 11 and going into my camera settings we can choose the slow motion options and it will be similar on an Android, go into your settings and have a look what options you've got. If you have a fairly new phone then you should have all the settings that I'm seeing here but an older phone may not have all of the settings but you should still have some slow motion options. So on the iPhone I have record at slow motion and it gives me a couple of options. Do I want to do it at 120 frames per second or 240? Now a normal timeline is 30 frames per second so if you're choosing 120 then you're going to get four times as many frames as you need meaning you can slow it down by up to four times and that's generally what I use. But you also have the option to do 240 frames per second and that's eight times slow motion slowing it down by eight times. Under your normal settings recording video you might also have 1080 at 60 frames per second and again because we're shooting in 30 frames per second 60 will give you twice as many as you need so you can halve your footage or slow it down by two times. And 60 frames per second is a good option if you want to play at normal speed or you may want to slow it down you're not quite sure and that's because you can speed up slow motion so 60 frames per second into 30 to make it normal speed quite easily but if you try and reverse that and take normal speed and slow it down you've only got 30 frames per second to start with and what happens is it will go to 15 frames per second, 8 frames per second and it will start being jerky or jumpy and it just won't look smooth enough so bear that in mind when you're using slow motion. Most of the footage I'm going to show you will be in 1080 at 120 frames per second so that's four times slow motion. So let's take a look. Now this is tracking so we're following our subject you can do that from in front or behind and again mix that up with some different angles so coming from the side from high or from low or combine the two and have a low to high shot or vice versa. So an establishing shot here seeing the overall scene but then closing in for a bit of detail all in slow motion using tilt locked or pan follow in some gimbals maybe add a bit of foreground interest like this shot here where I've used the grasses to just add a little bit more impact. And here's a reveal shot, so starting behind the grasses and then revealing the scene, or from low behind the rocks to reveal the beach, just going up, sometimes called a boom shot. And here again we're raising the camera up to see what the subject is seeing, or we can follow in and move in towards the subject like this one, moving in and up at the same time and seeing what our subject is viewing there in the scenery. This is the flyover in slow motion, so we're moving slowly towards and then moving the camera up and over our subject just to create a good bit of action. Talking of action shots, have a bit of fun with your footage. So here's some action created here using standard follow mode where there's movement or action there's often a good slow motion to be had. Here we've got the tide coming in and we're moving forward so we're doing the opposite to the movement or you can reverse that and you can follow the movement so here I'm moving back while the tide is following me or you can wait for the tide to go out for instance and then just follow the flow of the water. We can use speed ramps to speed up some of the footage that may be a bit mundane for instance this horizon we wouldn't want the whole 30 seconds but speeding it up with slow motion at the beginning or the end. An arc shot is where you move around your subject or person and often you'll speed up the centre part for effect. Or you can speed up and slow down several times throughout a clip. This is a good example where me is being spun around. Add some sound effects or some music and you can easily keep your viewer entertained throughout. Here we're just slowing down on Mila's face every time she spins around and the same for Max so he's spinning around and then we can show the result here a very dizzy child falling over. Cutting your scenes together is important so these are shot with two separate scenes but we're cutting them together seamlessly and that's important to try and make sure they marry up with each other. 
So here we've got a shot at the side of Nina and a separate shot between the legs, but all seamlessly put together. Moving to the side creates a bit more interest. So we've got some movement in the water and we've also got some movement at the side or action shots moving to the side. Here's a sun flare or sunburst shot. So shooting directly into the sun can add some really cinematic footage. If you contrast that with the other side, so the sun's towards the back on my right here, the footage is okay, but you're not gonna get those sun flares or those star bursts. So we go back again to the original angle we can see lots of starbursts and sun flares in our footage. It creates a really nice cinematic effect. Low angles or high angles changes up your footage. Perspectives that you don't normally look at can make your footage look really unusual. Playing in the park, slowing that down, so smiling, laughter, action, these are all good for slow motion shots. Starting with an establishing shot and then closing in for some detail and finishing off with the reaction shots here. This is inception or spin mode, so we're spinning the camera around. I have other videos on all of the modes that you can use on your gimbal if you're using one. Check out the description at the very end. Here we put a sequence together, so it's a couple of minutes of video cut down into some clips using a lot of slow motion. Just filming this from eye level won't look good and it'll be quite mundane but cutting in with some close-ups, looking at all of the techniques, getting high, getting low, maybe cropping in with some nice detail. Most of this recorded in slow motion just to add a little bit of a cinematic effect to the footage. Same here, so we're cutting this together just looking at the smiling faces of the kids. Now this sequence is put together incorrectly because it doesn't flow, so when we're moving up sometimes we're cutting and it's moving in the wrong direction. So you can avoid that by making sure that you get your flow right, so when the slide's moving down, cut to another where it's moving down. Here, for instance, we'll show you another video, this one, where we've cut it together correctly so all the movement's good. And again, we're using low angles, high angles, we're creating a bit of movement, some unusual footage to put it all together. So what was a couple of minutes long is cut into a few seconds with some clips looking through and looking at different angles. While editing, I'm trying to make sure the cuts are seamless like this one. And I'm repeating a lot of the same techniques combination of wide angles and close-ups and different perspectives. And then here's a little beer pong challenge in the garden at night using a lot of the techniques that we've described previously. I hope that was useful for you. There's some links in the description to some other videos that you might find useful. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care.